Thank you. Uh, friends, uh, let us begin with this total sampling issue first. So, it's obvious that sometimes uh, we have to collect our data using sampling methods. Not only because we have shortage of resources, logistics, money, manpower, but also because sometimes data often from samples are of superior quality than data often from complete samples. We all know that uh, sampling is resorted to because of positive resources. But I am telling you that sampling is also resorted to because it gives you better quality of data. So there are many questions in Indian census, population census of India. Uh, which do not yield very really reliable data. We don't use data on fertility and mortality, etc. from census. And we depend on sample registration scheme, sample data. So why is it that sample data are more reliable? Because in sample, in sample research, we can appoint more qualified researchers, we can give them better training. And also there is a trick that the quality of your responses, the quality of or reliability of the estimates depend on what is called sampling error. Sam uh, sampling error is extended image that you have taken sample of some size from a population. A very large number of samples are possible. Each sample gives you a estimate. If you can calculate standard deviation, this is a hypothetical question, if you can calculate standard deviation, then you get a standard error of the estimate. And the standard error of the estimate usually, uh, any standard error is proportional to one point through 10 and in sample size. So as n increases, as sample size increases, your standard error decreases and you have better samples. But the behavior of this thing, one upon two ten, if you plot a graph, is such that as n increases, immediately there is a sharp reduction in standard error. But beyond a certain level, say when n becomes 300 or 350, there is not further gain in terms of the standard errors. So whether you have a single random sample of size 350 or 50,000, as far as standard errors are, of estimates are concerned, they are not different. But non-sampling error may differ a lot. So there is an optimum point at which we stop. There are some of sampling error and non-sampling error <coughs> is minimum. And that is why sampling is a very attractive technique in social science research. Sample results can be more reliable than the results obtained from census. Now, how to sample a population? And usually, you make a distinction between probability sampling and non probability sampling. A scientific sampling procedure in which, what is, uh, this also makes a comment on science. Science means that the procedure is objective and that does not depend on decisions taken by the researcher. So a sampling procedure which does not depend on decisions by researchers and depends on the laws of probabilities or chance would be called a scientific sample. And in scientific you can include simple random, stratified or systematic sampling or other sampling technique that we study. Sampling technique in which decisions are taken by researcher are called non-probability sampling methods. And this quota sampling is part of that. So sometimes, so I get clearly this is from uh, different universities and quite often the students write that we have taken a random sample of so many people from this population. This, uh, in majority of cases, shows that students have not understood the concept of simple random. Simple random would mean that you have a complete list of all 
hundred units in the population, and you select some people using the rule that probability of selection of all the units should be same. So to go for simple random sample or to go for stratified random sample, you will need a complete listing of population, which is not possible. Suppose you want a simple random sample of uh, 300 one to B men from page to district. It's not possible for you in your PhD thesis to have a simple random sample because you cannot have un unless these things are available from sensors or other or some other sources. You cannot have a complete list of all the women belonging to your criteria and to page to district. Then what is the way out of it? The way out is that in place of stratified random sampling, we go for quota sampling. So in quota sampling, researcher decides who to interview, but by following certain theoretical principles, like on the basis of review of literature, we may know that something is affected by a number of variables. Like fertility, if I study fertility, I know that fertility will be affected by education, income, caste, community, urban rural regions. So if, uh, if I decide in advance that okay, I will take a sample of size 300, but in this 300, there should be so many urban residents, so many rural residents, so many men, so many women, so many educated, so many uneducated people, then I have a quota set. Quota means I have already seen the targets for different categories of people. These targets may be in proportion to uh, uh, composition uh, to uh, target for a particular category may be in, in proportion to share of that category in the overall population or it may be on any other basis because later on if the uh, proportion of different categories in your sample and the population are not, not same, you can go for weighted kind of estimate. That is not so important, but what is important is that sociology may kuch bhi aap study karo. Don't get a sociology mother studying something in relation to class, ethnicity and gender. So minimum quota sample we will have is that in which we fix targets for different classes, men and women, and in three groups, then it becomes quota sample. The quota sample now, for practical purposes, uh, replaces our need for stratified random sampling. Or limitation is here. Theoretically speaking, you cannot estimate standard errors because that requires assumptions regarding nature of probability distribution of estimates. Uh, and therefore, you cannot talk about confidence intervals. If you look at large scale, such important surveys, one of the very important surveys of India, apart from NSSO uh, and sample registration survey, is National Family Health Survey. Now, National Family Health Survey has a sample of uh, as many as 70,000 people. And at the end of the survey, they tell you estimates of different things, a standard error, relative error, confidence interval. If you go for non probability sampling, then you cannot calculate confidence intervals, standard errors, relative errors. But there have been some papers and God's uh, top journals in statistics which have compared probability and non probability sampling and found that as far as accuracy of results is concerned, carefully designed quota sampling or non probability sampling procedures can also give you as good estimates as probability sampling. So it uh, depends on your convenience and your understanding of the subject. Total sampling is a non-probability substitute of a stratified random sampling. Really speaking, you cannot apply statistical techniques on total sampling. But um, I have also seen papers in which assuming that though the sampling technique was total, but assuming that the sampling technique was simple random. Uh, can we estimate confidence intervals etc. or p value or significance change? That kind of work has been done.
Now regarding the mixing of this quantitative and quantitative, quantitative, this is a very important issue. As a matter of fact, there are some journals devoted to this issue alone. There is one journal uh, on mixed matter. This uh, uh, and the trend in research, particularly in operations research in our country, the world wide, is towards mixing the two, qualitative and quantitative. What is qualitative? What is quant and why do we need both? Why do we mix? Because quantitative methods are designed for scientific studies of existing patterns. We assume that some patterns exist. Like I may assume that social representations of health differ according to gender, class and ethnicity. And I need to unearth those patterns. I go for quantitative methods. The purpose of qualitative method is to see things from the perspective of the respondents, their subjects. And in any operational research today, in the, in the field of development, migration, family planning, communication, evaluation of different government schemes, we apply both the methods because on the one hand, we need some statistics. We need statistics regarding to what extent objectives of the schemes have been achieved. See, if the objective is that in Manrega, if the objective is to provide um, employment to, or, to the extent of 100 man hours per, fam, per household per year, we would like to know uh, what proportion of rural respondents have job jobs, how much work was generated, and in the work uh, in man hours, what is the representation of scheduled cars, scheduled drives? Qualitative research cannot answer these questions. So we have to have a properly designed survey research. But along with this, uh, along with knowing uh, to what extent our targets have been attained, which is the main purpose of evaluation research, we also want to know what is people's assessment of this. And what are their alternate? What do they think about these programs? In what form they want their services to deliver? When this comes to understanding things from people's perspective, then we go for qualitative research. Normally, uh, for for about 10 to 12 years, I was actively engaged with consultancy work, uh, and not independently, but. Uh, in collaboration with some research NGOs and we have always used qualitative and quantitative methods. Qualitative methods uh, or narratives or case studies or observation or ethnographic work or unstructured interview, these are qualitative methods. These give us insight partly to explain the findings of the quantitative and uh, partly to look at the problem uh, in a different way, you know, something these planners have not yet seen. So on the basis of what people tell you, uh, you can see things from different perspectives, from different paradigms, different perspectives. Qualitative research serves that purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, an issue combining qualitative and quantitative. On this actually we require 30 40 lectures. But in short, I can say that quantitative methods are designed to unearth statistical patterns, usually correlational patterns and a repeat in sociology, relationship between your study variables, whatever in whatever field you are working, maybe sacralized and maybe have maybe HIV maybe development, maybe migration, maybe identity. Uh, relationships of these things with class, gender, it is it. That is pattern. And that pattern comes out more clearly when you use quantitative methods. In qualitative methods, uh, qualitative methods are more suited to exploring the kind of work and uh, to see things from people's perspective. 
Or maybe people want something else in palliative care or uh, maybe you are providing something to your <coughs> target population. But the quantitative research will tell you to what extent they have succeeded in uh, providing what you wanted to provide to people. But what people actually want, that question can be answered by using qualitative methods. So whenever you want to see things from subject's perspective, you need to qualitative quantitative debate is not about the nature of variables. Your variables will be qualitative. You will have a statistical way of handling qualitative methods. Qualitative method essentially is about using phenomenological or uh, uh, that subject. And this assumes that there is no reality. Reality is always constructed. And when you want to know, in different circumstances, socio-economic context, cultural context, different genders, how do they construct social reality of some kind, then you need quality. So different ontologies, epistemologies. But I will say that, or what we have done mostly, uh, is we have used qualitative data or qualitative methodology to explain the findings of quantitative methods. Why so? By using narratives, case studies, observations, etc. Uh, the third question this is about the, this technique. Uh, which techniques, uh, actually all uh, different techniques have been developed in response to uh, different research questions. Uh, I tell the PhD students that there is a very good, you can't, uh, unfortunately in our country, in agricultural sciences, in medical sciences, and so in social sciences also to not extent. Research scholars have data. They have first collected some kind of data. And then they go to statisticians or experts and ask, kya technique lagegi? If kya technique lagegi is not the right way of thinking. If kya technique lagegi depends on what your research questions are. What does the review of literature suggest? What is your conceptual framework? And what kind of results you are looking for? For example, yeah, uh, one discussion. Suppose you have qualitative data. <coughs> qualitative data means you have diatomic or you are academic and you want to build a relationship between two variables or maybe more than two then you go for something like science suppose I want to know that there is a collection between knowledge, comprehensive knowledge Comprehensive knowledge of HIV and AIDS. This is one variable. And another variable is education. And I can make a table. I call it contingency table. In which there are categories of education, E1, E2. UK and category of knowledge, very poor. Very poor, poor, uh, something neither poor nor good, neutral, then good, and very good. And data are collected from n number of cases, and there are frequencies. Then the only technique I can think of is guys But whether I should associate education with comprehensive knowledge of HIV and AIDS or not, 
that depends on what my review of literature suggests. The research questions will come from the review of literature. In, in quantitative methods, if you are the, uh, if you have two variables, two quantitative or numeric variables, say x or y, and review of literature suggests that there may be a connection between x and y, x of the two. You can calculate correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient will give you the extent or strength of relationship between x and y. But if you want to know the law of relationship, law will mean that we want to know how this relationship is structured in the population. That if x value x changes its value by one unit, what will happen to y? Then we are using regression. And I will write y equal to d0 plus b0 x plus x. Only two variables. Y and y. If the purpose is only to know whether x and y have an association or not, then for this, and which x, which y, then will come from the new text. So statistical techniques are not to be selected after the data has been collected. Actually, <coughs> the review of literature is the most important part of the research. And if from review of literature we learn that the relations between x and y is like this, then you go for progress. And then if you also want to make predictions of y, what will happen to y if x changes, then you are to use binary regress. If your literature review suggests that the relationship is scientific, that there are a number of variables, and in sociology this will always happen, that there are a number of variables which affect y. Let us call them x1, x2, x3, x4. Review of literature suggests there are four things affect. That illness experience depends on urban poor relations, education, income, and gender. And the conceptual framework that we develop on the history of review of situation suggests that these are the variables which affect why, but there is no interrelationship between them, which is real. But sometimes the review of literature may suggest that what you are doing is you are using multiple regression analysis. And in multiple regression analysis, you are writing y equal to b0 plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2 plus b3 x3 plus b4 x3. And B0 is a constant term, B1 is a B2, B4. They are called partial regression coefficients. And they tell us that um, delta y divided by delta xi is Bi. The other factors remain the same. A very good phase from the problem. Other factors remain the same. A unit change in xi produces a change of Bi in the department level. <coughs> so if review of literature suggests that there are only two variables, y and x, y independent variable, x is independent variable. For this, if you want to predict y, you can increase the binary increase. If the conceptual framework is like this, problem kya hoti hai ki when you are deciding which statistical technique to apply, we have already what we have shown in the conceptual framework. Is wrong. Yeah. As a, then it, it makes your research, PhD research, routinized. You might be the statement of the problem, we hope, objective, we hope, it's to be a we hope. I connection has something. From first page to last page of the PhD research, there, there is a connection. So look at it, the conceptual framework. If your conceptual framework is like this, 
then we are going to use this multiple regression analysis. If you find that why uh, uh, your dependent variable cannot be numeric variable, it is uh, it is if uh, dichotomous variable, why the dichotomous? Then you cannot do this uh, multiple regression analysis. In one book of sociology that was given in the library, 20, uh, handbook of 21st century sociology, <coughs> I was reading an article on methods, and that article correctly said that some 15 20 years ago, sociologists were using multiple regression. And today it is more in fashion to use logistic regression. If you have a good paper, then you have to use logistic regression. Because what is the logic? The logic is that why can often be diverted from the binary. Yes or no? Knowledge exists or knowledge does not exist? Somebody is migrant or non-migrant. Somebody is Naga or Naga or Naga. Yes, no. Educated or uneducated. Somebody has favorable attitude towards family planning or may not have favorable. So, in most cases, increasingly we find that our dependent variables are dichotomous. Or they have a number of ordinary kind of categories. Then we will go for loss. And what positive means that now we are not predicting y, but we are predicting log p upon 1 minus p, and this side is the same. V0 the that side is the same. But in that case, the prediction cannot be like this, that the unit change in x leads to the change of v in y. Now the prediction is in terms of odds ratio. All odds means um, P upon 1 minus P. P is the probability of happy or something like uh, uh, in case of uh, tossing a coin, if P is 1.5, then odds, odds in favor are 0.5, are 1.5. Or equal to one or some odds. So in case of logistic regression, we make predictions about odds ratio. किसी चीज के अपने जैसे one of our recent studies, we studied the problem of human predicament in gender. So, I have to say this is an important issue. Sex is a distortion. 2011 census were more distortion than 2001. Spreading to all parts of the country. More prevalent among upper class, upper class is educated people, urban areas. More in developed areas, more in wealthy communities. The prediction is to be made regarding whether a woman will go for the female criticize or not. That is binary variable. And the independent variables may be size of land holding, caste, community, class, religious beliefs, or many other factors. Then we go for all Situation review of literature tells us. What kind of problem, what kind of complexity of relationship exists between variables and according to the But if you are conceptual, in many cases you will find that in the end of the research paper, there is more complexity than this, that some of the independent variables will be interconnected. Maybe x4 affects x2, x2 affects x3, x4 affects x3. Then we have to look for some other factors. Then we have to look for what is called the structural equation model of path and 
So we will test whether our independence variables are independent or not. If they are independent, then only we can apply vertical regression or logistic regression. If our variables are interconnected, in statistical terms, if we have multicollinearity, then we will go for path analysis. Structural regression part. So like that. If we are interested, suppose another complex thing is that the number of variables may be very large, may be 50, 100, sometimes something may be measured in terms of 100 items. Modernity, knowledge, illness experience, intelligence, there is something may be measured in terms of hundreds of items. And you want to know if there are some latent structures. If there are four or five major dimensions actually, uh, which are reflected in data of 100 items, then you go for factor analysis. So it depends on what your problem is. If you think that your sample size is small, if you think that uh, for a small sample, and when this, um, it's difficult to assume that it, probability distribution of estimated and when data are not reliable and when data, uh, your variables are not measured on uh, an interval scale you have only say ordinal data nominal or ordinal dichotomy or ordinal then you go for non parametric method so wherever in those areas of research, particularly in medical sciences, where sample size is only in the there is some new drug for testing uh, whether this drug for hypertension is better than the earlier drug. You cannot have a sample of 70,000 people as NFHS has. Then you depend on 5%, 10%. 15 patients, not more. Patients who are coming to the hospital who are suffering from that disease and some of them may volunteer to take the new drug because they have confidence in you and in science, some may refuse. So sample size is small. Then you go to one drug. Sometimes uh, you are dependent by the numeric, but the independent variable Unpossible, they are qualitative. Then you go for an instrument, for average. So it depends. What you what have learned before doing research, you must learn. In my Hamishwar, Hapur to Bale, grandsons, granddaughters. I have been learning the Kandal Sakti, our Bachas, and the Kandal Sakti. Even this is hack. PLT thesis is the piece of page ka written document nahi hai. PLT thesis ka matlab hai. Ki there is a problem which has not been centered in it. While some scholars are saying something and some other scholars are saying something else, there is a debate. And it was that. And the debate was belong to the international community of society. A local debate to kaali ki tez kuru mein loop jasa. They put the sociologist capital. The more issue is it. Research is part of research activities going on at the international level of it. So you, uh, you find that there are two ways of looking at something. But there are two policies. You join one. That is your policy. Your position on a debate which is being carried out in academic circles at the international level. After Central University, you should talk about international level. So you are joining the debate by having the position. That position is your thesis. And then the 300 page document that you submit as your dissertation is a defense of the position, which comes from arguments, from existing literature, from different sociological theories, perspectives, paradigms, models, from common sense, from logic, from critical evaluation of methodologies used by early researchers who are writing contradictory findings, and 
if you have done some primary work, you have done it. That could be simple. And in that, I'm going to make it level here. Many times the students think that, uh, uh, that they are working on a new problem and therefore they are doing a great thing. And what is a new problem? And then after all, I start receiving the education from the state and from the central university. Yeah, the education is a lot of things. You have to ask them. What are you doing? First of all, what are you doing? What are you doing? कि मिर्जापुर जनपद के कुम्हारों का समाज शास्त्री आते हैं कि मिर्जापुर के कुम्हारों का समाज शास्त्री आते हैं आज तक किसे आज तक की बात छोड़ो यू विल डू गुड रिसर्च इफ यू वर्क ऑन प्रॉब्लम ऑन विच आर लिटिल थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पीपल इधर वन थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पीपल हैव बोर्ड द थाउजेंड्स देन इट मीन दैट and on that debate you take so review of treatment is a very important part and now you have so much of facility level here in all the universities, central universities you have app code, you have desk code you have google search Abhi, good examples from abroad they also ask how was the review of literature done the home movie student did the first review of literature meant that anything, anywhere that we found on our research problem became part of the review of literature. Abhi examiner asked what methodology did you use to identify literature for the review? You have to be very careful at every step. And uh, the conceptual thing, the most important thing, review of literature, the objectives, if you have hypothesis, hypothesis, and these hypothesis and research questions and objectives will decide your conceptual framework and your conceptual framework and the nature of data will decide what kind of statistical techniques you are going to do. So, SRT is where Fisher's idea is where data is going to be statistical techniques and this is where Fisher's idea is going to be called the kind of data. So, it is the beginning. This is where you have objectives of your design, research techniques of design. When you talk about the methodology of research design, right then your statistical techniques can be used. If you want to ask something more, I will tell you. There is one more question that mathematics are wanting. Unfortunately, not much, no significant work is done in India in the field of mathematical model. And the reason is that in social science, particularly in sociology and anthropology, we go to the quantitative method series. And our BA and MBA level courses, I think that I will learn, statistics must be a compulsory course, research methods must be a compulsory course, and it must be taught more rigorously than the MBA. It was a lack of background, but it was a lack of background, but it was a lack of background. But when I gave the exam, the kids were in the class, the class was in the class. I was so confused, I was so confused, I was so confused. Then I was asking students, why do you think that I put in so much of efforts? And when I give the exam, you get 15, 16, 7, 8 out of 50. Then the student said, sir, phobia. Phobia. Statistics, homey and statistics is very enjoyable, very logical, very interesting and very simple, very simple. You just remove the homey and 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 homey understanding of statistics is from this phobia of statistics. Otherwise, the world of statistics is very simple, very interesting, or uh, very productive. And if you want to publish in papers in international journals later on, you must at least be familiar with statistics. But you must be familiar with major statistical texts. Phobia is true. A phobia is not clear. I can tell you that phobia is not clear. So, what I do? 
मैंने आधे घंटे की जर्नी कराओ फिर एक घंटे की जर्नी कराओ मैंने उसको गुवाहाटी से कहा कैपिटल भेजो गुवाहाटी से दिल्ली भेजो फिर त्रिवेंद्र में देखो गया स्टार्ट है जो है लोगों के फिर वो ट्रेन से नहीं फिर हो सकता तो पर्सन हुआ है फोर वीयर्स ये भी लेटर ऑन से कि मैं दस साल से ट्रेन में नहीं चला मैं तो ये इधर से ही जर्नी कर तो इट्स फोर वीयर वो दैट फोर वीयर है मैथमेटिकल मॉडलिंग इज एक्सप्रेसिंग रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन दैट इज इन एल्जेब्राइक फॉर्म सो इकोनॉमिक्स इज द मेजर यूजर ऑफ मैथमेटिकल मॉडलिंग सोशल साइंस सम पीपल देयर इज ब्रांच ऑफ सोशियोलॉजी फॉर मैथमेटिकल सोशियोलॉजी दोस्तों मैथमेटिकल सोशियोलॉजी दे से the vice society has not acquired the status of science physics chemistry that is because sociologists have not made use of that imagine what uh, what kind of physics we would have if early physicists doubted the application of that agar newton he has to give the number of block for it and newton would uh, have not given me equal to you the same तो आज हमारे पास फिजिक्स के इतने एडवांसमेंट नहीं होते साइंस पॉसिबल नहीं कि विदाउट हो सोशोलॉजी में क्यों नहीं आगे बढ़ रहे और अनफॉर्चुनेट आई नो द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ पैराडाइमेट्रिक आई नो दैट आई नो दैट पीपल लुक एट द सेम थिंग फ्रॉम डायवर्स परसपेक्टिव परसपेक्टिव ट्राइबल परसपेक्टिव वो सब ठीक है लेकिन सोशोलॉजी cannot become that advanced science unless you remove your phobia of it phobia of stars and mathematical modeling is such uh, it is expression of relationships we work we make some uh, we make some assumptions and under those assumptions then we try to represent reality in the form of the mathematical Assumption like this: velocity at time t is initial one velocity plus acceleration into time. So this is we are some assumption. We are making, uh, we are not considering parameter fixed. We are not considering other. Uh, we are considering only change in velocity and acceleration at time. And as gradually we start dropping these assumptions. We start thinking that these assumptions are too strong. We must become more realistic in terms of these things. So uh, they also become more complex in mathematical mode. Now, the part, the third part, is the one that we have to solve. The third part is the mathematical sociology block. You have heard it, right? माइग्रेशन में हम लोग एक जीव का मॉडल ग्रेविटी मॉडल ऑफ माइग्रेशन इन स्टडीज ऑफ माइग्रेशन वन ऑफ द अर्लीस्ट मॉडल इज कॉल्ड ग्रेविटी मॉडल ऑफ एंड दिस ग्रेविटी मॉडल ऑफ माइग्रेशन वाज पब्लिश नॉट इन स्टैटिस्टिक्स जर्नल वो इट टेल्स अस स्टैटिस्टिकल और मैथमेटिकल रिलेटिव्स इट टेल्स अस दैट माइग्रेशन बिटवीन टू प्लेसेस i एंड j इज a constant population of i s place population of j s place and distance separating between i and j d i k because it looks like the form gravity formula of physics so it was called gravity model. since i can go to statistics background so initially i thought this some statistics we have derived or this formula we have to follow this some statistics are in early 40s Uh, this gravity model of migration was given in a sociology journal, American Sociological Review. Several such models were proposed, and then this model assumed that migration between places depends on size of population of higher places based on their migration from one of the places, population of one of the places, and this is a separate region. 
and although this model, when I read this article in original, although this model uh, looks so simple and gravity type, behind this there were very strong uh, statistical assumptions, for example, grand size rule and uh, works of linguists before uh, development of this model in migration study, there were works of linguists. They were trying to look and to predict uh, frequency of occurrence of some words and write in terms of people using a statistical model. So this is a kind of example of mathematical model. As knowledge advanced, and today it is a new model. In those days it predicted migration between places in US context very well. And all types of migration, all types of journeys, by road, by train, by ship, by air. Surprisingly, this model model fitted very well. Similarly, a logistic, uh, uh, logistic model fitted very well with more popular the logistic model, uh, something like Y equal to series for A plus B and or uh, B0 plus B1, X1 plus B2, X2, etc. Divided by 1 plus e, B0 plus B1, X2. This is the logistic model. It looks like uh, initially going slowly then fast and then saturated. It was found that uh, this logistic model in the background of Marxian theory of population and other theories. Demographic plans are propagated. It was found that this logistic kind of model fitted the growth of population of all European countries. But suppose you say that, or your review of the data suggests that apart from population, there are many other factors which determine migrants cultural differences, linguistic differences, unemployment or employment rate. So these new things will have to be accommodated in this Maybe you feel that uh, in case of P, some transformation of P, log P or E raised to power P or something, or P raised to power L, fits the migration data pattern. So in this manner, the mathematical models become more and more common. Mathematical model, uh, expresses in an right form. You don't need to use differential equation model. It expresses, uh, so mathematical model expresses in an right form your own understanding of relationship between sociological values. And uh, of course it is based on assumption. It's a model. Model cannot consider everything. But when uh, you make your assumptions more and more realistic, then the complexity of your mathematical model also goes up. And we are looking for better fit and for a model which is consistent with your review of the Any other I will mean, take the part of this to solve the question. Sir, multi columnity in the question. Pardon? Multi columnity in the question, how can we avoid it? Multi columnity in the question. Multi-colonialty issue arises when you are using multiple relational elements. Why you got to be zero for the one x for the one x? If some of the axes are correlated, then it leads to the problem of multi-colonialty. Multi-colonialty is a problem. If you want to look for which variables are more important as determinants of the dependent values. If the purpose is to predict values of dependent values, then multiple linearity is not a So for planning purposes, for core class, for projections, multiple linearity, it's a myth to say that multiple linearity is always a problem. So if, if the purpose is to predict something, then multiple linearity is not a problem. But if the purpose is uh, to, to say that x1 is uh, more important, a determinant of y, that's the x3. And you are comparing 
these regressive coefficients, then multifold you can see create problem. Because then these D1, B2, B3, they have high standard errors and they will fluctuate heavily from sample to So if two researchers conduct the study and do the same error, same and in the same population, same population, same methodology, same question, everything is same. Their results will differ if they do multiple errors. That's what. So then there are ways. One way is increase sample size. Sometimes bigger samples make some correlations insignificant. Another possibility is that if you find that x1, that some samples say x2 and x3 are correlated, draw one of them if possible. But I will multiple it with another Another possibility is that uh, make a score combining both of them. So in place of two independent variables x2 and x3, you can make a combination of them. This is socioeconomic status score. Why do we use socioeconomic status score? Because all the components of socioeconomic status are interpolated. If you use them as independent variables in your regression, you will have multiple rates. But when by combining education, income, occupation, occupational stresses, etc., you have developed one index. So you have avoided the problem of multiple rates. Make indices based on correlated variables. And another, uh, if you do not want to do any of these, then you can go for factor analysis, more sophisticated statistical analysis or structural equation models. There are ways of handling that if there is Y affected by X1, X1 is affected by X2, X2 also directly affects Y then X3 which affects that. Right. So there are path analysis or structural equation models. And these structural equation models can tell you what is direct effect, what is indirect effect, what is net effect, what is joint effect. So there are many possibilities. Identify multiple linearity, impossible raise sample size, impossible drop some of the variables, impossible make combined scores. If not possible, then go for structural equation model or path model. So these are the ways of handling. Mujhe baad achha laga hai. Mere mere wali ke kaha ke toh ek bachcha usse mujhe baad aata hai. Thank you, Mr. Sharma, for actually introducing lot of statistical terminology to most of the audience here. And uh, I don't think that multicollinearity has been discussed and they have been into this idea at all. Uh, so mostly our research is centered on around qualitative research as said. And it is very important to know, uh, that is the very purpose of this lecture, that we have been exposed to a number of statistical techniques and it is very difficult to have the complete sense the way that he is trying to articulate and we have to know well, if we want to understand it that the sense. So it is actually an introduction to many of the people who have assembled here and it is very important for us to know these are the kind of techniques available and if I am trying to do a quantitative analysis I should beforehand to know that what are the kind of techniques available and how my research questions can be tuned and how my analysis can be framed in that way and the very initial stage of formulating your research questions or your research design. So my friends, uh, we are Really thank, thankful to Professor Sharma uh, uh, in introducing us with a number of statistical techniques. Even he has talked about mathematical modeling and mathematical sociology. Uh, I still feel puzzled while reading the uh, uh, journals of uh, American Sociological Review and American Social Association. It's really puzzling to read that kind of an article and to make sense out of it. I generally won't go beyond the abstract to understand what it is. So, that is the kind of statistical knowledge that we have. So it is very important to have different kind of understanding to improve our arguments and our voices are heard at policy 
same level. Thank you, sir. Uh, we hope to have this kind of interaction among the students, among the scholars, and among the academic community here. Thank you, sir.